should Sugar Sean fight next? Now, this is a very interesting question. And let me tell you why, okay? If you try to jump into this thing today and you start yelling Sean's name from the rooftops, and you've got a better argument than everybody, you find out some guy has won nine in a row, but it turns out you've won 11. So you start trying to match him and you jump yourself in today just by example. For me, I'm going to say you're eliminated from the talks. Why am I going to say it? Because I have a different litmus test. The move to get Sean's attention was orchestrated and played out by one person. And that's just the truth. Now, the timeline matters. Sean is the champion of the world now. You would like to fight Sean. But moreover, you'd like to fight for the championship of the world. And moreover, you like the money and you like the fame and you like the main event status. Am I close? Am I close to describing you? Okay, great. Did you call Sean out before he fought Aljo? Did you have the sense that God gave geese to jump into the side of the pool where nobody else was? Take the underdog, even though he was a three to one dog. Did you have the courage to attach yourself to him then? So that you now move in lopstep with him. Oh, by the way, somewhere along the way, he picks up a bell. Which means now you're not only fighting him, you're fighting for the belt. Did you have the sense to do that? Because for one guy, the answer is yes. Yes. Cheeto Vera can answer that question. That is the litmus test for Chael. Who was here first? Who wanted to fight him? I can find all sorts of guys to fight for a million dollars. I can have all sorts of guys raise their hand for a main event on the worldwide leader. I can find all sorts of guys who want a championship match. I want to know who uses those as a byproduct because you want him. And there's only one person. That's Cheeto Vera. That's the truth. Now, is there any way to have an exception to Chael's litmus test? Of course. Aljamain Sterling would have one. By example, Aljo has complete immunity from calling out Sean thinking that Sean might be the future champion. Of course he does. And history will agree that the former champion, particularly a record-setting champion, gets an immediate rematch. Especially when it is a knockout finish. And that's true. If you want to go look at those stats, that, that is literal and accurate what I just told you. When you get immediate rematches off of agreed-upon judges' decisions, it doesn't as strongly warrant a rematch. When you have a one-punch knockout that surprises everybody, the numbers, historically speaking, are greater in favor of rematch than any other kind of finish. Now, I only bring that to you because they have one thing in common, which is the person who got beat immediately calls for the rematch, and Aljo didn't do that. And I don't fault Aljo, by the way. I'm sharing with you as we look at this puzzle, what pieces are in place, what looks perfectly normal, and we've seen that a million times before, and what is missing. One of the things that is missing is Aljo essentially giving his blessing and his well wishes to Sean. It was a very sweet and kind interview. Aljo calmed down. He realized, right? I mean, there was shock that set in. Sugar Sean did an interview three days after he won the belt and said, it feels like I'm in a dream. It still hasn't set in. And we understand that, don't we, from Sean's standpoint. So because we understand that and because we're reasonable people, we're going to give the same side and the same respect to the opposite side of the coin, which is Aljo. So in that moment, he felt a very specific way. But in that moment, he did allow a passing of the torch. And when the torch was passed, Sugar Sean, who's up in the loft, instead of pulling the ladder up behind him, told Cheeto Vera, you're next, even throughout a date of December. Now, that date isn't locked in. That's the guy workshopping ideas. But because of that, I do think that it's going to be very hard to ignore Cheeto. I mean, how would you like that, guys? All right? How would you like that? If you were told something, but then a couple of days later, somebody that had the power to take it away from you decided to take it away from you, you go, yeah, but you, but you said. 
Yeah, but I've, I've got the right histories on my side. But it's like, yeah, all of those things are true. But I, I knew that in the moment. Maybe you forgot it in the moment. I didn't forget it in the moment. You remembered it in the moment. And you said that I was going to get it. Like, it's, it's, it's one of these really tough spots. Then you have Marab coming in. Marab is so good. He really is a special talent. And he appears to be a very special guy. But we have to take people at their word. We have to. And I know people love to say words don't matter. This is a sport. We can pretend that. You'll get people at the highest of decision-making in the sport to publicly back you up. They're pretending that you're right. But how can you tell me words don't matter? If Marab is saying, I've won more fights than anybody in a row, and I think he's won nine, something, I think it's nine. It's crazy. What if somebody raises their hand next to him and says, I've won 12? What do we do then? I mean, what, what do we do then? What if the guy's lying? I'm asking you, what happens if Marab raises his hand and says he's won nine? I have no way to know if he's won nine. I have absolutely no way to know. There's research that I could do. There's places I could go that will tell me something. But if I'm not trusting it out of his mouth, why would I trust a dot-com somewhere? Right? I'm either going to trust him or I'm going to trust some dot-com. No, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to trust him. So what happens when somebody says, I've won 12? What do I do then? I mean, you see where this gets silly. But the point I'm trying to make, it doesn't matter how many you've won. Who'd you beat? How'd you beat them? What was your placement on the card? What did you do to get the focus and the attention of this guy? And it's not as though Marab doesn't matter. He did something to Sugar Sean. He stole his coat, sat on the cage with it. There's a moment. And it's not as though I'm eliminating Marab. It's just some of his arguments are a little bit tough. What is the storyline? Why are we here? I've got to take you at your word. You said you won't fight this guy. You and this guy are equal. You say it's whoever won the most fights in a row, but this other guy just lost his last fight. And I heard you tell the media that the guy with the loss should get the opportunity, not you. So do I listen to the 9-0 and o when the same person telling me I should listen to that is arguing for a guy that is 0-1 in his last one? They don't go together. And now that I get you to see that there's a difference, before you go, oh, yeah, yeah, but wait, wait, wait. You don't need to but wait me. I don't need to but wait it. We're all on the same page here, which is your record doesn't matter. It's never mattered. What have you done to get the attention? Who has the highest temperature? Do you have the mandate of the masses or don't you? And I don't know that I could sit here and argue for you, Cheeto Vera, all day long. I don't know that I could do that. Cheeto needed to be on that card. Cheeto needed that win. Cheeto needed Sean to say his name. Cheeto needed to take to social media and back up and remind everybody that Sean said his name, of which he did. So I'm giving you four names. Aljo, Marab, Henry Cejudo, Cheeto Vera. I'm giving you four names. I don't want you to tell me who should get the title shot. I want you to go to the comment sections. I want you to work backwards. Of those four names, who are we going to eliminate? Aljo, Marab, Henry Cejudo, Cheeto Vera. I want you in the comments to tell me who is not. Round one, we, we're down to four. Round one of eliminations. Tell me of those four who is not going to get the title shot. 